Hello and welcome to the Plo Newsroom. Uh, your guests, your hosts, as usual, are Fred van Dijk from Rotterdam. And Hi. And Philip Bauer from uh, Munich, I assume, yeah, in Germany. I, that, was, that was a test. You, you, that was you a passed test. the test. So this is episode 15, recorded on April 24th, uh, 2023. And yeah, it's a pl podcast about Plone, if you don't know that already. Um, that's weird. Um, and yeah, we're available on audio and video. Video obviously on YouTube and audio on any podcast player. We have a small web corner on plone.org slash newsroom. Yes, we do. And yeah. So what are, what are our topics today, Fred? What are we going to talk about? Um, mainly, uh, uh, well, as newsroom, we've got three blown releases made uh, uh, since the last time we recorded uh, uh, our, our podcast. Um, some upcoming sprints. Um, and there's, of course, this week. And that's why we must say we're doing it a bit um, like this, because there's a World Plone Day coming up again next this year. And we're still also busy preparing talks and videos and helping with that. So we're doing a bit a uh, bit of live interaction now and see how far we can get with the newsroom. Yeah, that's true. Um, so this is Monday and we were all like both sick at different times. So it was hard to find a time for a recording. But um, yeah, so this is our uh, World Plone Day, at least my World Plone Day contribution. You're giving a talk also. <laughs> You'll tell, tell us later or you, actually you you shouldn't because it's uh, World Plone Day. People should listen to that. So yeah, um, so indeed people will see this first time a bit, bit like our last year's uh, uh, surprise thing thingy to, to bring another plan conference thing where we did a presentation on plan conference. We'll air this one first in uh, as a part of the reels of World Plone Day. Um, World Plone Day is is uh, uh, an event that I think before the whole internet video and other hype, uh, World Plone Day was uh, really centered around local events in uh, 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 organized by Plone users, by Plone integrators. Um, the last 10 years, and I think now, especially uh, since COVID, things have moved online. And we now have a 24-hour uh, uh, present, uh, presentation reel of all things blown, which can be local talks, which can be uh, uh, technical talks, uh, user group talks, uh, use cases. Um, and we're also invited. So if you're seeing this, happy World Plone Day. <laughs> That's true. In two days, because we did pre-record this, because otherwise we would go insane. Yeah, so the, in the past, World Plone Day was fun. We had a couple of World Plone Days in, in Munich. And one year, I think we had four different World Plone Days in Germany alone, one in Berlin, uh, one in Munich, and two, one in Hamburg and somewhere else. So that was really, really good. And uh, lots of other places around the world. Obviously, that's a lot of organizational effort to book a venue, uh, invite people. We actually had posters made and we had people flying in to Volplone Day Munich because we had a, a interesting schedule at one point, not the only one. Point, at uh, many Volplone days, everything was interesting, but one year was very interesting. We actually had people flying in from Finland and France and from the north wow. of Munich, even though they had a Volplone <laughs> Day there themselves in Hamburg, but we had the better schedule. So. Yeah. So this this year's uh, World Plone Day, n not to spoil the surprise, because I know, don't know how, if it's uh, how big the surprise is, but the the, the people in uh, uh, Brazil, the community there, has a local event, and they are inviting a very special guest. Indeed, what you said with moving people and get bringing people in, but indeed, the le recent years uh, uh, World Plone Day has moved uh, a lot online, and I can tell you, I'm because I'm I volunteered the marketing team last year, so I got sucked into the organization now a bit as well in helping out. I think are not to underdo uh, uh, what, uh, what else, but I know that uh, this year again, Eriko and Ricky Pekka are very busy organizing uh, uh, and the schedule and the videos coming in and uploading. So I'm, I'm, I'm lending a hand there and, and trying to figure out a bit how it works and, and assist them a little bit. But for them, it's, it's a really major, uh, it's a really major e event. Yeah, and, yeah, also, and also other, other people of the marketing thanks team. Thanks to all of them who are working yeah, on that. That's other people of the marketing team are helping. <laughs> You just submit a talk and they say, hey, please upload your video there or here's a link and then you can do it live. Uh, so it's really no hassle for people giving a talk. 
Uh, whereas for for Rico Pekka and Erico and the others organizing that um, major major effort, obviously. Yes, but what we also do, if you if you are hesit uh, hesitating to 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 submit a talk for now for this year's World Poll, it will be a bit uh, uh, <laughs> tight schedule, <laughs> too late to next, say next year. Uh, yeah, but what we also provide is that if you if you are a bit uh, unsure about how to record this stuff, we have a nice online video platform uh, where we can, for example, also do it like we're doing now in interview style, and there's a there's a, a nice talk. Uh, with uh, uh, Sally, also a marketing member, who uh, uh, who's going to uh, interview uh, uh, Guido Stevens today, in two days. Right. <laughs> this is all Inception. I've seen this movie once, and now my time schedule in my head is totally <laughs> wrong. But, it's, but they do a very nice interview where Guido explains uh, uh, about what's up with Quave, uh, uh, and these recent features added. So that's a, that's also an interview style uh, video uh, uh, a talk you can do, and you can ask the marketing team for assistance with that uh, uh, for maybe next year. And that's so something I really have to watch um, to to see what's up with Quave. Where yeah. Is it still alive? Yeah, obviously it is. It's, it's very alive. Strong. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I, it is. I know that, but I'm I'm not using it because we were we sucked at selling it. Uh, just personal failure, not the, not the fault of Quave. But you have some personal news. Uh, you yes, got so no. I what got married. It? No, no, I already. I'm happy, happy in a happy relation, as you know. No, I That's started. Right. I start. Well, I I kind of. Well, you could put it that way. I started working part time uh, for Kit Concept starting this month, so I'm now working three days, three days a week for Zest uh, still, and I'm also started working two days uh, part time for Kit Concept. Uh, and I actually I, I went to Germany last week uh, to to uh, uh, I would say to to meet my new colleagues, but that's a bit uh, besides the point because I've known these people uh, 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 and and many of them are my friends now for years now, uh, meeting them at sprints, uh, meeting them at conferences. Uh, meeting them at the Beethoven Sprint, uh, so it was like, yeah, it was not a difficult decision to make when the opportunity showed up. Uh, they can need a hand with, uh, especially now, some project management and DevOps. Uh, so but, that's why I'm going to try five to help days them. Working that that sounds n not very Dutch to me. I I have the impression that Dutch people only work four hour, four not four hours. Uh, a day and four days a week, but four days a week, I heard that's very common in the Netherlands. Yes, it is. It is. Um, or at least l l lowering your 40 hours to something like 36 or 32 indeed. But um, uh, we are re also really strong in part-time. Part-time in the Netherlands is really a thing to the... Uh, uh, um, you could say it... it, it it always it, it even gets a bit too messy, I would say, with working part time in the Netherlands. If you have to split a job in three over three persons, and I'm not talking about RRT jobs, but for example, you also see it in teaching uh, uh, and in other areas. Other uh, 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 that, then, yeah, Netherlands is is, is part time is a big thing. Yeah, I, um, I love part time because it it's very good against burnout. I'm I'm not a part time person. I work not permanently, but I work I think too much, but. Um, Sometimes you need a, not only a timeout, but just to reduce your workload, especially your, your community workload, if it conflicts with your uh, business business tasks that you have as well. I, I'm, uh, Tiberio, he just uh, took took a timeout from his, uh, Tiberio Ichim, he's yeah, taking I saw a his... timeout from his plone uh, contributions in Volto. I, I wish him all, all the best with his timeout. I hope it's nothing serious. But uh, we're, we're hoping that you'll come back and we'll open, uh, open. I don't know, we'll embrace you with open arms when you're coming back. And I hope your timeout is helpful, whatever uh, the reasons may be. Yes, because when you when you put it up, um, I know that uh, 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 Odeweb has been working very hard where Tiberio works yeah. for, uh, because a few weeks ago, uh, uh, the last of, of the, the main side of one of the uh, biggest customers, the European Environmental uh, Organization, their main side uh, is now fully Volto. They've been working on that for two years. Uh, 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 a colleague of Tiberiu, uh, uh, Aline, uh, uh, announced that on the Volto team meeting. Um, so we will we will have a nice uh, news item and another uh, uh, marketing for that uh, on the plone.org website uh, shortly. But that's one of the uh, that's a really 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 uh, 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 big endeavor. Uh, yeah, and so they moved it's, it. it's not that one site. It's a huge organization with so many sub uh, yes, no, but this sites, is different sites. Yes, and but this is the main all site. Moving, they're all moving to Volto. That's yes, everything they, they do is moving to Volto, and they're still um, finding time to maintain some stuff that the community uses in the classic stack, like EEA faceted navigation, which is super important for many, many, many classic sites. Uh, so. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. So whatever. Go to the real news. The yeah, real, real, real news. other, real other news where I've also been been involved, but then only on the on the on the lower layer. The Plonconf website is live. Excellent. And Plonconf. it's a beautiful Plonconf. website. It's a beautiful website. Yeah, it's it's Drupal or is it WordPress? With you? <laughs> no, it's okay. again Volto. Ah, boring. Ah. Uh, so yeah, let's um, see. check check out the website plonconf.org uh, and book your travels. Uh, I'll just get, I'll so share the screen here. Hotels. It's too it's too nice. It's yeah, too the, nice. I love the cow. It's a it's a nice town in a in in a valley. Uh, a bit. Uh, it's not directly at the sea, but it's not far. It's between um, between San Sebastian and Bilbao, uh, and yeah, it's going to be gorgeous. Travel, look, they just they've got a page about that. Yeah, if, uh, regarding travel, if you if you if you go to a travel sto ca store and ask them train travel there, they're going to say this tra this town doesn't even exist probably. <laughs> but you, there is a town at the border between France and Spain. Uh, on the French side, I don't know what name it is, but you can find it on the map. It's easy. And there is a very fast TGV, uh, which is the French fast train connection mm -hmm. from uh, from Paris. Uh, it's like four, four and a half hours from Paris. And from there, you can take a local train uh, to the conference location, which is uh, certainly uh, the road route which I'm going to take. Yes. So to my, my involvement with the site was uh, uh, providing uh, uh, some system resources and uh, uh, providing the CI/CD for the for the website config, configuration setup together with with Erico. For the rest, uh, the people of, of Code Syntax built this beautiful website uh, in Volto with some nice custom blocks and layout. Uh, accommodation info is all there, and it looks very 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 slick. Good. So um, that's the first news item yeah so we also had a bunch of plone releases as usual because we have monthly releases of plone 6 and while we are speaking i I'm, you need to check but i haven't reloaded my browser yet but while we're speaking on monday obviously uh mauritz is doing the final release of plone 604 which is the release date is today but we also since the last episode we had uh, 603 which was done in march yeah a uh, bunch of bug fixes uh we'll go into that later um can you are you doing the 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 other video with Maurits during the yeah movie? because yes that's also so it's another inception moment here so what happened i, I um, so Maurits is is of course a long 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 standing colleague of mine we uh he, he started working a little bit i think a few four or five months earlier than me uh, when he started working at CEST. So we've been colleagues for years. And Maurits is now our beloved uh, plan release manager. Um, and I was, Maurits, I know you o you always do a lot of work. Wouldn't it be cool for World Plone Day if we could record your releasing? And he was like, um, uh, Boring. Mm, well, <laughs> no, he was getting a bit like, like okay, that's, that's a lot of work, a lot many details. And my screen it was, no, no, Maurits, I just want to, to, to let people, others see, to let other people see, and if they want, if they want to know, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to watch it, but to see what's what's involved in there, uh, how, how the parts connect, uh, uh, what you do. So, and and he he, uh, I must say first a bit reluctantly, but he agreed. And indeed, last Friday, because it, with release process, uh, uh, release process, we always have kind of release candidates or uh, a soft release. So what we did last Friday afternoon, Maurits prepared already uh, uh, some stuff beforehand. And in one and a half hours, uh, uh, he talked me through uh, the re to actually doing the release live at the moment. So if you if you see this on a Wednesday uh, uh, at World Plone Day, then I'm now announcing on Monday that I we will air a recording taken on Friday with the soft release. <laughs> but the actual 604 final was also indeed released this afternoon. So we can uh, yeah, talk about it later. And I must say- I see it was yeah. released on at f uh, 14, uh, 2, 2 p.m. 45. Uh, so if you, yes. if you if you depend on the uh, constraints txt or requirements txt and the versions, uh, it's all there and the packages. That means also the packages are on PyP, PyP and you can install and download yes. it. I, that means I have to update 
the Startflow build out this evening and update the demo sites and all the things that happen after yeah. a plone release. And before that, me or Eric or somebody will have to create the new images because those are also following for there before you can do that. So that's yeah, also the a story. Since the demo sites yes. now use the yes. uh, the Docker images. Yes. That is a dependency. Yes. So that's all. If you if you see this, uh, uh, if you see our uh, video here, uh, also check out the the uh, the plone four six oh four uh, release uh, video because indeed what you said if you if you curious how this constraints.txt and this version cfg uh, is generated and how it ends up on this.plone.org and what the whole thing is really listen to to Maurits showing us and i'm interviewing and asking Maurits. i'm trying to ask some smart questions and and to, to keep things going and i must say i was surprised uh, i thought i had i knew most of it uh, 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 in general and then it, suddenly he started to like, okay that's why you're doing the release <laughs> i was really flabbergasted that what yeah. What's this step? So it's interesting. It's detailed. It's nerdy, uh, but it's really interesting if you're curious about uh, the the amount of work it takes to maybe, make a plan release. You already survived all the details. That while you listen to us. So what's in the new releases? So what's in the six oh three and six oh four? Yeah, so what are some highlights? Indeed. Pick so some. So so we had six oh uh, six oh three. Where's my? Oh, I have to find my, my March notes. March twenty seven. There it is again. Yes, and we because we did 602 the last time, so we had March. Uh, yep, 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 um, cash, cash, cash. Uh, um, I know Erico and others have been working on uh, uh, on adding better cache support, especially for the Volto front end yeah. uh, uh, in the latest releases. And that means if it's Volto, it means we have to uh, uh, add also those those features or those uh, information in Plone REST API. So Plone REST API has gotten some updates. To have better cache control uh, um, and also to, I think, to, to set uh, cache settings or to have the control panel there. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of dependency nonsense was cleaned up uh, in both releases. And uh, Jens uh, was uh, proudly showing, uh, uh, sharing a uh, uh, image of, of his, his thing that uh, resolves all the dependencies and uh, highlights the uh, the How's it called? A circular dependencies yep. that we need to get rid of. So we're slowly getting approaching the point where we have no circular dependencies, but we're not there yet. Not yeah. even in six oh four. But it's, it's, uh, it's, there's it's, something. W w there's one thing that is close to my heart in in the Volto uh, part of that release because the corresponding Volto release is sixteen eight sixteen dot eighteen. Yes. And uh, what made it in is finally the teaser block is now part of Volto core. Obviously, everyone uh, has been using uh, the source checkout uh, or the 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 the, the add-on version of the teaser block, and now it's shipped with with that. I'm really happy about uh, that. Finally, finally making it into the Volto release, so that's yeah, great yeah. news. We could have done a demo, but we'll do it next time. Yeah, <laughs> promise. Because this is only this is only one of the first block that should go into core because uh, um, I mean Volto is, is, has been released with Plone 6 but it has been a bit of a lean release when you look at blocks and blocks are really the shining part where you can really extend uh, a, a, a Volto uh, a Plone website with, with extra functionality. The teaser block is one. Work is still being done on the grid block uh, which is, takes another a separate discussion. Um, but indeed, teaser block is now one of the first ones at, at, as kind of what was seen as the extra block that now gets moved into core. And it's it's not unlike what we done with Plone for the last 20 years, but many Plone features has all, have also been developed first as add-ons, and then they get moved into core when they're stable enough and they and people in general think, like, look, this is so yeah, generic, yeah. why have, an, have a separate add-on for that? Uh, also, you, ha you have some time to, to get less excited about what you just wrote, because th at that moment is it is like, ah, oh, this is so cool, I did that, and everybody needs to use that. And after a year or, or a while uh, of that living as an add-on, you, you get a little distance, and then you realize, it's, it's a good oh, this is also pulling in these crazy dependencies <laughs> that we'll have to maintain forever and ever and ever into the future, and it has technical depth and stuff. So it's, it's a really good idea to not, uh, to not push it into core at, uh, at the first uh, appearance in the world. It's indeed a good timeline filter for that as well. Yeah. So another another few Plone 603 highlights. Uh, let's, also let's move to 604. 
This is about, no, I've got six or three stuff. Um, because, no, I have to mention boring. this one. No, it's boring. No, no. So, uh, there was a lead. Uh, uh, I think also David Glick worked on that. Uh, there's been some improvements in the Russell uh, or in the de uh, development proxy server. And that's really important because that has bitten people and bitten me as well personally yes, a few it, times. It has. It has. Uh, yes. So that is now more stable uh, in, in 6.03. 6.04 highlights. So again, some updates to, uh, to the caching rule sets. And there was one tiny, I, s <laughs> I explained it to you when we, when we talked this earlier. There's this one line I said, hmm, what's that? Add UID to relation value converter. And I was like, Wait a minute, I kind of requested or asked for that one. Um, so what who, happens? Who wrote it? Um, actually, Maurice did it because it was just adding one uh, parameter to a, to a query call. But what now happens is that if um, in Plon REST API, if you serialize a relation field, it's now also outputting the UID. And why do we need it? We need this for uh, collective export import or actually for a feature of collective export import that we've been talking a lot about and I'm kind of experimenting with now. Um, we have this chicken and egg problem uh, uh, with a, a collective export import where it's all nice uh, and shiny when you import the whole tree now of content items. But as soon as there are also relations, we got, I mean, content items have fields and also all those fields can also be, be supported. Even custom content types uh, uh, have automatically all their fields converted to JSON and then imported again in a plan site uh, and, and get it deserialized. A problem arises when you have relations. So when you have a relation on, on a news item to another page, but you first import that news item and the other item to which you refer the relation is somewhere way down the content tree, yeah. then you can't restore that relation. Because That's why it's a separate step now that it has to, has to be done. And the idea to, to defer that is to put it all in annotations and re, uh, resurrect that information later. That is, uh, that's a, an, an approach that we're moving yes, so, to. Yeah, and I was and I was more. kind of I, I was I was I was testing that approach uh, uh, and, and doing some some stuff like two two and a half months ago on a branch somewhere locally. Nobody can see me, and I was missing and I was missing the UID. I got it converted, and I didn't have the UID, so I put it somewhere, put a note. Uh, and Maurice later helped me said, "Look, it's just a one-liner over there." It took some while, and now I'm seeing it back again <laughs> when I'm reading the Plan 604 release. And I was like, ah. Done. It's in there. Okay. Where's my branch? I need to continue, because that's and we will talk about it a bit more. Uh, that that importing is is uh, uh, is important to have that those relations uh, restored nicer. Um, another thing for classic UI, which will be six oh four, which is also interesting because I know it got fixed like last week Friday and also even a bit last weekend. Um, there have been some issues with uh, mo using Mosaic in 604 Classic, where uh, we found out that sometimes the tiny MCA, uh, 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 which is don't initialize properly. And it's been a re uh, uh, Johannes Ragam worked on this, Peter Maltese worked on this, uh, uh, Franco Pellegrini uh, uh, put in some notes also as, uh, back in January already. Um, and we figured out, uh, Johannes figured out some places where, uh, where this might uh, need, need a fix. And I think that got in just nicely just before the final. So Maurits made a soft release on Friday. Uh, some other fixes and packages were done. And Maurits added those. And the final release from this afternoon uh, should have at least some of those fixes in there. So if you were having some issues with uh, Mosaic Implant 6, uh, ch check out the 604 release. That's, that's good to hear because I'm just deploying a site uh, for a client with Mosaic and Plon 6. Um, I, I missed that issue because they haven't tested that feature yet, yeah. but uh, yeah. they, they would have run into that. But there's, uh, there's more. There is a... Um, well, I just missed oh, you, uh, There is stuff in in Volto which I'm uh, I'm happy happy about. Yes, I about. I wrote it down this afternoon. I think this is something we we worked on like two years ago in the relation yeah. sprint already. Yeah, we had a small relation sprint but two th years that ago. That part was not finished. They, for for classic, that was all finished and really nicely done. The static catalog, catalog vocabulary, which is a nice feature where you can uh, um, specify very specifically specify which content uh, of which type, where at which state is possible uh, to be uh, selected as a target for a relation field. And then you can use that uh, that configuration 
uh, that's in the schema where it, I think it belongs and use that information for any different kind of widget because that was always uh, only possible with a relation widget in former times which is really annoying if you have one item here and one item there and they can both be related to but you need to how do you find them when you only have the relation widget you, you don't have a nice and now you can have radio boxes uh, select lists uh, autocomplete lists um, w w what not and now this su support for this has finally landed in Volto and uh, thank you very much for who, whoever worked on that who did that I think Katja worked on that excellent yes it, yes I, know I, did, she, I she forgot to copy I forgot to copy endpoint. it but she was now she was working on the endpoint yeah so, so I know cool. I know you had this like nice uh, example content type uh, 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 add-on that shows a lot of the relations uh, in there but indeed we had it kind of partly finished or, or mostly finished for the classic UI widgets but there was an issue with the Volto widgets yeah and now that that part has been rounded as well so now you can finally indeed use that instead of having the relations which it's using if you know that there are only indeed what you said like four or five items in the site then you can just uh, have a normal uh, drop down menu for example uh, to select exactly. those or, or I, I actually i like radio buttons uh if, if you're like one yes. or four departments uh, and you need a relation at the end that yes. required a lot of hand coding in the past and something else photo related i'm and i'm not sure i'm going to put this right but we are now having the option to have uh, uh, themes in add-ons and there's a lot of work under the hood uh, uh, also going to the next plan 7 release already but also now in plan 61 where uh, all kinds of use cases for uh, uh, for volto are now pitched like but can't we also have this or architecturally can't we uh, move uh, uh, or or shuffle around configuration like that and one of those things is now that correct me if i'm wrong but if I understand the ticket correctly, previously, if you wanted to add something to a theme, you al always added that to a Volto project. You had a Volto project, it had a yes. theme directory, and in there uh, you had a, a lot of, uh, uh, you, had, you had all your, your modifications to the, to the default Volto theme. What you can now do is also have uh, most of, or all of the theme related information in an add-on. And that allows you to create an add-on as a plugin and then reuse that theme in multiple sites. And that's apparently something that wasn't possible uh, before, but which now has landed also already in Volto 16. I think it will definitely be a feature for uh, Volto 17 or or later, but it has now also been added, uh, maybe even backported, I'm not sure. But this is really cool that you can now indeed have everything uh, uh, theme related just as an add-on and you don't have to stick it or uh, into the Volto main project. Yeah, we, we talked about the Volto, uh, the slimmer Volto configuration uh, approach uh, the last podcast and I'm very anxiously looking forward to that being like finally finished and documented and uh, so so we can use that because uh, previously it was like 150 or 200 lines of uh, JSON uh, a package JSON and now it's just down to you can I think 20 lines yep. and you're done that is really really good and just to show off a little bit what they've done really well as well <laughs> is that English really well as well <laughs> is documenting it. So I checked the, the, the issue and I also saw a lot of changes to the documentation and it's all fully documented here in our upcoming Plan 6 documentation. So that's really cool to see an issue and it's also uh, documentation for this has also already been added to the... That's, uh, that's, that's impressive because we, we uh, not only traditionally suck at documenting stuff, we're, we're so proud at programming it, showing it and then, okay, use it but you read the code if you if you really want to understand yeah. what it what's happening yeah. because the documentation is tbd to be done well actually there's a lot i know i know that there's a lot of work has been done on documentation yeah. also uh, uh this month uh, and previous months um we're going to have dark mode very soon into the yes. documentation and we're also going to have uh, uh, better. Uh, uh, oh, oh oh wait 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 that's contributing to blown if we're now sticking here this has also been uh, last one. Thanks to Steve Percy, who collected a lot of our uh, previous uh, uh, contributing information, which is now has gotten his own section, contributing to Plone, where you can see a special section for contributing for first timers, with explanations about the contributor agreement, uh, contributing to the documentation, and then we have separate uh, uh, sections for Volto, and we're also going to add an extra classic UI, uh, 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 classic uh, section here later.
The, the updated theme with the dark mode is already deployed on Training Plone Org. So if you want to play around with that. Ah, the, oh, that was, yes, Plone sorry, Org. I'm mixing up indeed. Uh, Training Plone.org had already uh, activated the new theme as well. Let's yes. show it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Should I do it back? Very nerdy. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have to slow four seconds. <laughs> nice. Yes, yeah, Sunrise. Okay, we also have a quarterly Plone 5.2 release. Uh, this time is 5.2.12 that happened on April 21st, like uh, three days ago today, from, for us at least. A uh, bunch of bug fixes, including Turkish translations uh, and, yeah, what's very important, uh, the yeah, there's a nice. Uh, that's I, I really love that. There's that's a the quality of life thing. In the setup, uh, site setup screen that shows you when you're using an unsupported Plone or Python version, because you can still run uh, Plone uh, 5.2 on Python uh, like 3.5 or 3.6, and these are no longer supported uh, by the Python Foundation, so they have run out of uh, security support, and uh, you should not use them anymore. Yeah, so that is something that people do again and again, uh, and I will show you why. This is JenkinsPlone.org. This is our testing uh, 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 server, uh, which we use for continuous uh, uh, testing and integration and not delivery this part. That's going somewhere else. But indeed, Plone 5.2, because this is the release that still has to support Python 2.7 Python if you want to do in-plus migration, um, Plone 5.2 is not tested on anything higher than Python 3.8. And that's not because we don't want to, but because uh, uh, the Plone 5.2 series if uses SOAP 4, and SOAP 4 really has some very nasty edge cases uh, um, when you move that to SOAP 5. So long story short, if you really want to be sure, 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 don't run Pwn 5.2 on Python 3.9 or Python 3.10. And maybe it works. Maybe you don't hit those edge cases. But the story behind it is, this is our test matrix here, and we, we just don't test Pwn 5.2. And also from the other changes in these in this quality, uh, quarterly release, Pwn 5.2 is slowly going to uh, end of uh, support. Uh, at the end of uh, this year, uh, it, will be it will be only one year of really security-related bug fixes that will be done. But normal bug fixes will also not be added anymore to Plone 5.2. Plone 6 is now our uh, preferred release, and you should slowly start moving to Plone 6. Slowly? All <laughs> of my current <laughs> projects are running in Plone 6. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. Yeah. Okay, we have, uh, this is about n releases. Um, we have some co upcoming events, obviously about Plone Day, da, da, this is today. Uh, but there is more. There's the Beethoven Sprint that's happening in May, May 15 to 19 in Bonn. Um, it's booked out, so sorry if you want to come. Uh, you can join online, obviously. There's always uh, the option to... Uh, participate as an online participant and there's a like a sp st stand up is online uh, so you can uh, do that but uh, the the office of kit concept is not that huge uh, so uh, we're already booked out for that one yes. and uh, Fred we're gonna meet each other there we we're going to meet each other there and to put a bit of history to it so Beethoven sprint started already in 2017 and the historical uh, announcement there on the kit concept website is still there a strategic blown sprint uh, on the headless CMS and that was in 2017 yeah. so I checked I think this is now the fourth or the fifth uh, 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 run of the of the Beethoven sprint in Bonn Philip you're a historian what's special about Bonn uh, Bonn used to be the capital of the German uh, of, of Western Germany, the GDR, um, and no, not GDR. I, I, I can't remember how it's called in, in I'm English. I'm surprising story. you. I'm surprising no, you not, there. The GDR was the eastern part. Yeah. Uh, the uh, yes. Federal Republic, whatever. Yes. Yeah. So but indeed, it, after it's after former, it's it's a small town next to Cologne, which is a big city. Uh, but it's really nice. It has great pubs, uh, nice people, uh, nice inner city with uh, shopping and cafes and whatnot. And it's yeah. May, so it's it's in the high 
high spring uh, it's it's a great time uh, to be outside and meet people from the plum community yes and it's strategic uh, we're going to talk about why that is uh, at the later subject but yeah. we have another sprint yeah um, there is Let's a switch to that one. Um, in, in a uh, town that is hard to pronounce, it's Juvascula. It's in Finland. It's called the Midsummer Sprint. And the reason for that is because it's in Midsummer. Uh, and there's something really special about that because I attended the Midsummer Sprint in 2017 uh, at the same location. Uh, so we, we went at one mm. night, we had a barbecue at a lake. And we went home at two o'clock at night, and it was still light outside. So the sun never, the sun kind of sets, but it never gets dark. So that was really new for me, who lives in in an area where the sun obviously sets every day. I only had that in in Stockholm many years ago when I had an exchange with my uh, when, when I sang in a choir, and we had an exchange with a choir, and we went to Stockholm, and there also, and it really it messes up with your mind because we went for a walk outside at around ten in the evening, and it got uh, uh, dusk, it it got a bit darker, and we were like walking, walking, walking. We got back, and we're like, oh, we're walking. Yeah, it's half past one, but it's it, it, it just lighter. stops. No, but it, it stops. It stops. It's getting a bit darker, but it doesn't get fully dark. It just yeah. stays there, and and you 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 stay awake yourself. You don't notice you've been walking for two hours. Oh, I guess everybody. And that was Stockholm. Yveskile, Yveskile is even been, further up. Been there uh, that far north or that far south on 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 this planet. Uh, for mm. me, that was the first time in Yveskile, and it was a, a weird and amazing and great experience. So if you have time. Go there. Uh, Rico Pekka is organizing the sprint at the University of Uvascula with his team. Uh, a bunch of people are coming. Um, yeah, that's that's a great great yeah, the location first, to the go. If, and you, the first if you find the time, uh, I r highly recommend going. Yes, I'm really curious that because there there was a sprint that got cancelled in Finland yeah. many years ago, and I kind of fallen. I wanted to go there, and that was cancelled. So I'm really trying to get to this one instead now. Really want to go a bit further up north in Scandinavia. I really like the Scandinavian countries. Mm -hmm. So that's the Yveskile sprint. Um, bum, 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 bum. What shall yeah. we do, Philip? Yeah. So at the uh, sprint in Bonn, at the uh, Beethoven sprint, uh, that that is a strategic sprint. That's how it's called. And uh, I want to discuss with you a little about <laughs> what is what is strategic for Plone. Uh, obviously, uh, that is that is highly subjective. Uh, n n in no way, like the official, per, per, there is no official list of stu things that are strategic. Uh, but I think it's it's worth uh, thinking about um, wh what that might constitute before you start putting in lots of hours into something that uh, your heart is close to. Um, I'm, I, in 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 no way we want. Uh, I, I want to tell people what they should work on. Obviously, that's their own decisions. But I, I want to share what what I my, what I think about before I start a project or I contribute to something or when I go to a sprint, uh, wh what topic I pick uh, that I want to work on. And there, there are a couple things that that are, are for me always the, uh, boxes that need to be checked or that should be checked. Obviously, if, if I really fancy something, I want to learn something new, I can pick whatever I like. But if, if I know that it's, uh, there's very limited time and I, I'm burning for Plone and I want to uh, improve Plone in, in some way, uh, these boxes need to be checked for the stuff that I'm doing. And uh, the easiest box to check for something that is a strategic uh, or uh, you could also say high impact task is uh, it should improve approachability of Plone. And that's always also something that is, it's very general, so it could be... It, yeah, approachability. approachability. That is, uh, okay, uh, increase the font or, or, or the search engine uh, um, um, ranking of the Plone org website. It's a super valid task and it's, it doesn't require any hard uh, coding. But, and, but that is, uh, this, if, if you look at that, like approachability and high impact, that means it everything that is strategic uh, should in some way, at some point, increase the market share of Plone without uh, being 
ob because I, I really suck at that, uh, direct marketing, like writing marketing copy. Uh, that is excellent and I love people doing that, but I, I really bad at that. So I, I pick my more technical things, but I, I pick them in a way that they uh, improve the approachability and the visibility and the market share of Plone. Uh, that is how, how, how I uh, approach these things. You, you mentioned approachability, Philip, and I had to think about the Beckman rule. Yeah. That's a basic. It's it's a basic thing. So uh, um, I'll exp I'll do it because I think we did it last year as well. Uh, so the Pac-Man rule is when you're at a conference and you're standing with three people uh, or two or three people together and you stand with each other face to face. Um, it's it's uh, a bit uh, uh, not intimidating, but it's not attractive. If you are a th if you're another bystander and think, hey, those people are chatting about something, should I maybe listen? What they're talking? is that something interesting? If people are standing with their faces to 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 another, they're not really approachable. So we have this kind of jokingly called Pac-Man rule. If you're standing with three people, pretend that there's an open space for a fourth person so that anybody can can join in without feeling themselves uh, uh, how you call it without without feeling themselves being pushy. There's always an open there's always an open spot uh, to, to also join a conversation or just listen uh, and also contribute. And, and that's we're not only being nice in like nice in a way of, as approachable using the Pac-Man rule, but we have an ulterior motive because we want to include people to have more people contribute and be part of Plone, the project and the communi community. It's not like uh, we everybody we, we want people to think that we're nice. We're trying to suck in these people, bec and this is this is a way to 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 in, in, hmm. to be approachable. If you're not approachable, you, you're not gaining new yep. developers, obviously. Yep. So that, that a lot of things hang on that, uh, and w a very not, a simple example, but sometimes really hard to make, is the de beginner developer experience. Impro improving the experience for beginning developers, how to get started developing with Plone. We've been discussing that f f up and down uh, in, in, for the past years, and we made lots of prog progress and sometimes a couple of steps backwards also. Uh, but th that is that is obviously a very strategic task for Plone because uh, that that is one. But also um, visibility to non-developers, uh, for example. Uh, the conference having have, having the conference uh, open for decision makers and not like only technical tasks, but also uh, making making talks about how how to manage your content properly, uh, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, or plan for managers. What? I, yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's it's a bit preaching to the choir where we've been active, uh, uh, where we're trying to uh, for ourselves to to indeed participate with that. Um, but indeed, it's, it's, I must say, Philip, uh, um, if you'd asked me two or three years ago, I would have been like, uh, that's not fair because of a pandemic, but uh, I would have been, oh, no, there's so much work to do. I must say now, since, since six or eight months, uh, I must say, uh, I see a lot of progress towards that. Um, should, should we? Uh, no, we'll do it later. So. Um, the very good, I mean, it's not there yet, but we have way better documentation than what we used to have. Uh, the contributing section that now has been uh, uh, put up there. Um, if you now see at Volto, the, the Plone distributions uh, uh, that we started uh, uh, this year again, thanks to Erico, who, who uh, created an add-on and, and for that and, and demonstrated how the profiles thing works. So that's also in progress. Yep. Um, there's a lot of things and, and something else really ridiculous maybe, but Five to ten years ago, ten years ago, let's put ten years. Ten years ago, Plone was this enormous beast with 150 uh, modules, and it was very confusing and to install it. Paraphrasing uh, some people, if you didn't know already some Python or Python packaging or how this whole works, and I think we've the the, the complexity of Plone has been uh, catched up uh, by the complexity of the JavaScript frontend com uh, uh, developer community, where you now also have like uh, uh, one gigabyte source installs on your uh, pro your project folder with node modules, directories, and everything else, and ten secret incantations to get Webpack running again to to build a front end. Um, also, uh, 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 making a bit too black and white, but uh, I must say that that the the, the Plown Classic UI backend story at least starts to seem a bit less complicated again, just in relation to the complexity of the of the of the front end community uh, building even greater and nicer and better, but also bigger and more complex things. Yeah, but we are approaching it the right way. Uh, the to to improve approachability of this really 
two, two, two running application stack, two different ways to install parts of these applications uh, using the Docker container setups that uh, people are working on. That is a, for me, that is a very strategic task and people are working on that so they're, they're, th these resources are allocated in the right way. Um, let, let, as, as, let's take a step back. Uh, um, because approachable um, uh, strategic tasks, uh, that's also something official. So the, the sprint in Bonn is a strategic sprint. Um, that means that the organizers of the sprint request funding from the Plone Foundation. The Plone Foundation gets a uh, basically a quote from the framework team or I'm not sure because things are moving in yes, the way at some point. Yes, might go to the steering that, circle. That, that should be the steering yeah. circle at some point. Uh, to say, okay, yeah, that this is really strategic for these and these reasons, and then different uh, amounts of money are available for these sprints for uh, travel, uh, yeah. rent for rooms and stuff like that. So that that is that is how how these sprints organize. But the tasks themselves, I have uh, I pick three th three examples for things that were strategic to plan. Um, and they are very different. One is Volto itself. It is highly visible, so it improves visibility of Plone, and in that in that case, maybe the market share because the approachability as an editor, uh, as a as a developer, yada yada, depends on if you're a React developer. Obviously, improves approachability of Plone, but it's it's really 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 visible and has a really high impact for Plone the project, and it, it we. Long ago, we decided that it's it's a it's a matter of not life and death, but we really want that. We really wanted to invest that time. But the point is, it is a ton of work. It is not a low hanging fruit. And what I love, I I I, I burn for these small things that are strategic, but low hanging, and there are not many. But there is one. I'm, I'm getting to that. Another one that is not low-hanging and uh, strategic, <laughs> but is the Python 3 uh, porting. Obviously, that was a matter of life and death, but it's not visible because if, you, if you're a developer or user, you just expect that. That's not so, something like Volto. Hey, cool, new front end. I can add, work with that. It's, it's just something you expect. If it's not there, it, this project is dead. If it's not running on Python 3, I'm not going to use it. And yeah. But it's, true but it's even managers. But it's even difficult, indeed, to communicate to end users or IT managers or, or, or application uh, managers who use a CMS and then get to, yeah, well, you need to upgrade to a new version because the old programming language is gone and it will cost you like this. And people are like, but why did, why did you move to a new programming language? And then we have to say, yes, well, sorry, that's the Python Software Foundation. That's the, the, the creators and the, man, the stewards of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the programming language. Why did you put, put, choose that language that has a breaking, uh, a breaking 223 that costs us so much money? Well, they're still not, <laughs> they're not using uh, Windows NT3 uh, or Windows uh, 95 anymore as, as, as well. So they, they, they should, if, if they're in any capacity, uh, profession, RT profession, they should be used to software update cycles. Of course, that's, that's the whole thing. You, there, there is a very good reason that we moved from Python 2 to Python 3. And there's a very, there are many very good reasons why, it was a, why they were breaking changes to advance yeah. the programming language. And also, if you see now the new things we can use in, in, in the latest Python uh, 3 uh, 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 language as, for, as language features that also benefit uh, the, the Plone stack again. The benefit is impressive. But it, it's it, it, in that way, it is very strategic, uh, but it's not visible, and it's it is high impact if you don't do that because then you kill the project. Uh, the third example I, I picked is having a list of clone add-ons, and that that is such a simple no-brainer. Brainer, it was so simple that we made it so complicated that we didn't have that for years and years uh, because we're always overthinking it. Uh, if anyone remembers the Paragon project or the Plone Software Center, which was an add-on developed for Plone 1, I think, even, uh, and stuff like that. So, But this is it's a perfect example. If you do that right and don't overthink it, it is a low-hanging fruit, uh, has v high visibility and a high impact because it 
gives users who make decisions about projects about using Plone uh, the chance to see oh this is a good add-on this is this is an available add-on there are two solutions the one you, that you're sharing is the Plone uh, yes I'm plugging it I'm plugging it again I showed really it I nice. think yeah yeah and uh, the, the other one is the awesome list uh, which is even simpler because you didn't have to code a single line it's help just me text. Uh, just, uh, com awesome. plone. Plone. Google for Plone and Awesome, and then you'll find it. <laughs> That's better. There is an Awesome Volto and an Awesome Plone lid. That's a uh, um, redacted, awesome plone. not redacted. It's there a, it is. Uh, yeah. It's a curated list of add ons. So these are solutions that both were not like really a lot of work. They didn't add any complexity to the stack or technical depth. Uh, but they have a high impact and l high visibility and uh, very strategic, I think. So the, I, I, I love these two projects because they, it means when you start working on that at one sprint, uh, you, m you might have a chance to actually finish that at, during that sprint. And um, so when I go to a sprint, uh, like the Beethoven sprint next week, uh, not, not next week, like in next month, weeks, next, yeah, month. next month, um, I uh, I thought about picking a, a topic, and I'd love to work on that. My plug now for what I'm not, I'm not telling anyone to do that because I'm telling you I'm I'm trying to work on that. If if anyone is helping, I'm happy. Uh, is to update and improve the demo sites that we have, demo plone org and the classic demo plone org, um, with better and more example content. It's like one level and. Uh, more add-ons and that would be so cool to have to demo clone and I, I know that this is easy and possible but it has a couple of dependencies that need to be fixed and done but it would be so nice to not only show clone okay this is a news item and this is a page and this is a Volto uh, site with one, the default blocks that are shipped or uh, two or three add-on blocks but okay actually have uh, renditions ha have examples for these content these blocks and pages filled with these blocks and uh, additional add-ons like EA in classic EA faceted navigation easy form and whatnot uh, available mosaic. The site, mosaic and stuff that you use for for uh, for your day-to-day -day projects uh, these would be that's I think that's a high impact low-hanging uh, high visibility and it adds no technical depth, uh, at least not really terrible technical depth that you need to uh, carry with you for the uh, next uh, decade or stuff like, like that. So you're talking about distributions, Philip? Basically, yeah. It, that would be one approach. The other is just hack it until it works. Uh, <laughs> but obviously distributions is the better solution for most of that. That's yeah. why I'm so happy that they exist. Indeed, uh, the work was started uh, uh, in the uh, Alpine City Sprint in February. Uh, the switch is already here for distribution, but uh, still some work has to be done. Also by us, I think, Philip. Uh, Erica started with the Plone distribution uh, uh, feature uh, to have it uh, in, in Plone Core. Um, but indeed, what you say, you want to demo uh, uh, add-ons, you want to demo also ca uh, content in there. So we want to create a like, kind of pre-packaged plone setups uh, with a number of add-ons with a setup and also with demo content. And for that, we also need to have a kind of way to export and import the content fully, uh, which is a kind of a bit a nice round trip to uh, to the UID thingy I mentioned, because that's that makes also a part of it, because we would really like it for people to say, okay, I have a plone site, I'm adding these and these add-ons, I'm creating a bit of default content. I now export the content to a single bundled file whatever that is somewhere on disk and then I can package my add-ons and my content and have that as a kind of distribution as a starting point or as a demo for other people to show uh, uh, what you can do with the CMS okay. that's a we're, we're not there yet but I have this very strong feeling that will we be uh, 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 we will have that in six to eight months yeah at I'm, most I, I, I agree and that 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 is good. That's good for the market share. I've, I've no numbers about market share. It's a, like the market share in the heart. Maybe. Yeah. I, I have a couple more examples of things that might be strategic if 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 someone wants to work on that. Um, obviously, something or 
stuff people already work on uh, is the development setup for uh, for, for starting be uh, developers, uh, especially using Docker containers and the development setup with Docker containers. Stuff that we talked about last episode and that we will definitely revisit at some point. But what I really love to have, and also little de technical depth un un unless we put it into the core where we, we were there before, will be an alternative new theme for Volto. And I know it already exists. It's called Light Theme, and it's but it's not super finished and polished. But it would be so cool to have to cool, uh, a cool, very cool to have Volto uh, with two different themes. Uh, maybe shipped at some point, but until then, as an add-on, say, okay, there is a different uh, theme. This is, it's also great to have this as coding example. You can look at that, oh, how did they do the search button mm -hmm. so that it yes. shows the whole screen or stuff like that, different things, uh, pu putting that in. Uh, um, a theme gallery right. is obviously too much to ask, but an a alternative theme to Volto, uh, that would be, I think, highly strategic uh, task to actually finish that. I Obviously, it's not that simple. There's a lot of stuff to do there uh, to get that done. But I'd love to have that. And the same for, uh, goes for Classic, by the way. But there are a couple of themes in the uh, theming training. Yes, there are indeed. And also, I should mention, we, we're not pushing this very hard. But for for example, the, the PlonConf 2023 website, if you're curious about the source, um, you can just go to the Plone organization and type 2023.ploneconf.org and you can see what the people of Code Syntax uh, have done for modifications to the uh, core uh, uh, Plone release and core photo release and what they've customized to add all those things because this is open source people. Yeah, same goes for Plone.org itself, uh, which yep. is, has a theme, a custom theme, a, a, a ton of custom uh, blocks that you can uh, look at the code and be inspired by. Yeah. But there's there's like two two more things just to say that these really need. I wouldn't say need to be done. Obviously, they need to be done, but I don't want to try to force anyone to do. But something that Jens and others have been doing a lot is triaging tickets, looking at all tickets. Is that actually still valid for Plone 6 or is that something Plone 4 or 5 ish? Uh, that there's a huge list of tickets on GitHub and going through them and closing those that are no longer uh, valid and maybe fixing some low hanging fruits there. That is a, obviously a strategic task because people report bugs because they encounter them and they hope that the community at some point fixes them. I do Sometimes I do the same, I just report a bug, sometimes I fix them, and I'm always really happy when someone else fixes a bug that I report maybe now or maybe five years later. I, it doesn't really, uh, un, un, until it hurts me that much, uh, I, I, I'm happy if it, it gets fixed later, if it gets fixed later. And also writing or even more important, updating existing documentation to newer versions. That is obviously a strategic task. It is not that high visible if, because hey, this chapter changed and now reflects the current changes in this and that widget and that and that. That's not something you see instantly, but it's it's a real blocker if you get into Plone and you want to work with it uh, um, on, on a professional basis and the documentation doesn't reflect uh, the current project. Uh, state yeah. that is and it's annoying. it's we used to understanding it we used to have uh, these tune-up Fridays or also uh, yeah. uh, 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 monthly things where we need we would together clean up uh, issues and tickets and look at that but indeed it's you, you can say this is part of a strategic sprint but I think it's strategic ongoing work uh, to do that um, because indeed you can help also if you're not I mean I, I also myself I know quite well what's going on but I'm not a full-time always with my head in, in the code developer. But even I can help with uh, with looking up stuff. I'm, what I'm really good at is looking up stuff and figuring out what other people wrote and then relating uh, to those things. So also in that, for example, for last week with this, these issues with Plot Mosaic, I helped there not by diving into the code or helping, but because there was a problem with, uh, uh, with this RCI, with the tests not running anymore. Uh, because we updated pip to a, a, a new major version and one of the options of pip had changed that uh, took out our, our testing i figured that out uh, posted a, a note about hey this is i think this is this is going on let's try and see if it works um, and indeed it was one it was one tiny part of the whole solution but the tests continued running and the 
real developers, as I would call them, figured out what was wrong in JavaScript and added stuff and, and were able to validate it. And that's my small part there, figuring out some information, adding there, looking through the tickets, uh, uh, maybe doing a new, uh, uh, a new merge from master into a feature branch, uh, adding, a, adding a few notes there, uh, uh, and then helping people to, to, to heading, helping other people to move along and, and, do, the, uh, uh, and, and do the final fixing. Yeah. So to wrap things up, we're approaching one, the one hour mark. If, if you think about working on something in Plone, uh, maybe keep these things in mind. Uh, approachability of Plone is something very important. Uh, that is already high impact. Uh, if it's visible, it's good. If it's not, it might be still strategic. Uh, but ask yourself if you work on something, um, in, in which ways, on which levels does that help? Or does it only scratch your own itch? Which is fine, which is totally fine. I'm not, 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 uh, not berating that at all. At all. Yeah. And if it's low hanging, then just do it. Because yeah. these things can be done during one sprint. It's like, ah, uh, we have to do a two year project and uh, create a new team for that. If it's a low hanging thing with a high impact and strategic value, that is something that really, really needs yeah. to be done then. So, Philip, to wrap up, um, let's go to the list of things that have already been uh, uh, suggested and which have been uh, uh, put by people into the sprint document or has been added as strategic as things to work on at the Beethoven sprint that might inspire people from actual problems that have also been uh, uh, been reported and that they want to add. So, for example, Plon 6.1, uh, what will be worked on next month if people uh, uh, have time for it, because I know when you're done in the sprint, sometimes things change and you wanted to work on A, but you get sucked into B and C and D. Uh, but indeed, the container row grid block uh, 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 that also needs to go into core. Uh, Quanta toolbar, maybe already for Plone 6.1. Uh, drag and drop support is something that has been lacking in some uh, areas in Volto, which people really want, uh, love to improve. Relations control panel. Um, yeah, Katya is working on that. Because there is a very cool relations control panel for classic UI, but it's not in uh, in, in Volto yet, and it I think it needs a lot of custom work because it's just a simple fields uh, uh, that get translated automatically. Um, sitemaps for larger websites, because if your website really is huge, like at the size of a research institute, then your sitemap uh, 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 will also get uh, swallowed by all the content and be, be very slow. So that's something people want to improve for uh, for Plone 6.1. And then that's also uh, just a few of the things uh, that are for our next upcoming 6.x, uh, 6.1 6 release. For Plone 7, indeed, the whole theming story, I already uh, gave, gave it away a little bit with a small change to, to put a theme in an add-on. But the story is way bigger, of course, because that's Quanta, which uh, Victor already announced last year. Uh, where you really want to open up the theming uh, uh, to not only to not be only stuck, I think, here to semantic UI, but be able to use any kind of framework in there, which has been a story and, and a wish uh, 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 that has crept, crept up for at least four or five times, I think, that I have uh, looked into the news and what people were working on in photo in the, in, uh, in the last years. Um, and of course, yeah, indeed strategic, our plan roadmap uh, and releases uh, 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 approach, uh, document our release policy and write down the plan roadmap for 6.1 and, uh, and 7 is indeed something that will also happen uh, uh, at the Beethoven sprint. And I think we will, we will continue the discussions we already had at Innsbruck uh, uh, on this, uh, with of course, again, the architecture model, uh, which is important in the back end that also will get dis uh, discussed there. Yeah, there's also um, something that bit me in a project recently. The the hero block needs uh, some improvements, and there is a there's like work that was done by Tiberiu and others uh, that needs to be finished to get that in because it's not extendable. So that's just a tiny thing, uh, but it's a lot of code. It's not super visible, but when you're actually working on that, it's it's a pain because the hero block otherwise would be great to extend. And uh, um, I had to write something my uh, custom because that was just not possible. Yes. Uh, Other strategic things, of course, uh, have been added like the documentation. Again, install docs yeah. is something we're still lacking uh, because we're also still trying to figure out uh, 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 the, the best optimal uh, Installation story there for which uh, target group. Uh, Volto docs will of course get updates, and I think Steve Percy hopes that we can uh, do a lot uh, enough work that we can finally uh, release the Plone Six docs as the official new docs.plone.org. 
Yeah. So if we can really get, uh, pull that off together uh, in a month, that would be really great because there's a lot of work still to be done, but already so much has been added to the Plone docs that they really deserve it now to be our main uh, main primary docs uh, link. Yeah. So what are, what are you going to work on? I am not going to say anything about it yet because I really have no clue. There are so many things. There are small photo things that I want I want to add where I think this shouldn't be too hard. Like you said, this it's an itch. It's low-hanging fruit uh, uh, and it can't be that difficult. So it would be really great to have that in strategic. But I know, again, I will be pulled into other stuff as well. Um, I'm also, because I know with Beethoven Sprint, a lot of people have uh, asked to, to come, but uh, the, the office space is really, really cramped. Uh, 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 not because it's, it's really cramped, but for the, for the, for the kids concept uh, a company, it's the perfect size, but suddenly have like 30 or 40 or 50 people yeah. to a normal, also working, working uh, remote company. They wouldn't fit in my exactly. office how, space. Philip, <laughs> how, would you, how would you invite uh, uh, 40 people to start to start Sol headquarters? Yeah, exactly. In I'm your obviously. bedroom. Exactly. <laughs> and the cellar. Yeah. No, uh, so we, when we had Sprint in Munich, we obviously did that at the university and we had huge rooms. So we, we were able to accommodate more than 50 people at a Sprint. Yes. But the, the location in Bonn is nice. Yes. And I don't, I want them to, I don't want them to rent uh, some, some anonymous, uh, huge office space hall. That's annoying. So I'm, 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 it's okay. Yes, it's but why it needs to be manageable and managed. Yeah, they so try. Jo join I know, I, I know, I know. Uh, uh, they try to uh, to uh, ask that for the university, but the university is is is, re is uh, renovating themselves in uh, uh, in Bonn at the moment for the next year, so they have a lack of space. Uh, but we really want to pro push, I think, also remote uh, access or remote uh, participating, uh, and that's uh, what you said. What you're working on? Well, then for me it would be okay. Let's see if I can spend if 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 a few people at the spring can spend uh, a bit more one two hours a day uh, helping remote sprinters to to stay connected that's also a very strategic and valuable thing to do oh, yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. so yeah there's a lot there's always too much there's too much to do at the sprint if whether it's strategic or not uh, um, so I'll, I'll keep my cards closed and just see what happens uh, uh, and what, what what is needed at the sprint okay. as well? I, I already gave away what I'm going to work on. I hope hope I'm going to get somewhere with the demo sites, and uh, obviously uh, need some help from other people with that, especially the plone distributions, export import, and so on, which is me. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's call it a day. Thanks yes, for Philip. tuning in. Uh, thanks, Fred. Uh, enjoy the rest of the World Plone Day, and uh, see you in Bonn. Uh, Finland at the conference in Basque Country and wherever uh, Plone is happening. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you next month.